It's not really. It's not really a lightsaber. It's a. It's a proto saber. I can't believe they keep calling it a lightsaber. Huh? Huh? It's not real. It's not. It's not the real thing. It's got. It's got a corded power. Okay. Hello there. We've just made the world's first retractable plasma-based lightsaber. A real, retractable, plasma-based lightsaber. The pinnacle of sci-fi tech. And probably one of the most sought-after fictional technologies ever. As you know, we've been developing different lightsabers, or, like they're called in Star Wars lore, proto-sabers, for the past four years now. From some initial power supply tests that got the fire wow, department dude. called on us, to version one, using nitinol wire. First of all, it's not real until we actually see people fighting with them. I, I don't... I, I want to see a fight. Okay? Version 2, using a tungsten titanium blade hybrid. Version 2.1, so we could have a real life lightsaber duel. Which, by the way, was extremely unsafe. To finally, our Kylo Ren style lightsaber, complete with a 3D printed titanium hilt. A protosaber, of course, is a lightsaber with an external power pack. Since you know, we don't exactly have D sized batteries capable of putting out more power than a nuclear power plant. Which, by the way, is what you'd need for a lightsaber to function like it does in the movies. <laughs> now, in my opinion, what we've made so far are some of the closest representations of lightsabers using real life technologies. They look like a lightsaber, they sound like a lightsaber, and at temperatures of over 3,000 degrees, oh my they God. actually cut stuff like a lightsaber. But as you know, the internet is not easily pleased. Those are just red hot sticks. That's just a red hot piece of metal. That's not even a real lightsaber. Your lightsaber. That's. Exactly what you should expect from the internet, though. This is exactly what you expect from the internet, right? Like, people are, you know, you're <laughs> look at this. It only takes an hour to turn the lightsaber on. All right, Kyle Gardner, you make a damn lightsaber. Lightsaber sucks, and you should feel bad, too. Luckily, I have thick skin, since I've read over half a million comments on my YouTube channel. That's equivalent to like 200 full length novels, by the way. So despite the trolls best wishes, we have not given up, which is good since you know, you could count on one hand the amount of people in this world actually working on lightsaber tech. Anyway, how the heck do you make a plasma based lightsaber? Well, best theories say that plasma is held in a beam by a magnetic field, which scientifically checks out. You see, the issue is producing a strong enough electromagnetic field to contain a blade well, the lightsaber would quite literally have to be built inside of a box coated in electromagnets, which turns it into kind of a useless science project. Woo, I made a lightsaber. Luckily, we've come up with an alternate solution to control the flow of plasma, which allows us to make a retractable blade mm. and even change its color. We're gonna be using laminar flow. You know, that cool thing where liquids flow smoothly? We actually teased this project months ago on our Instagram, which Maybe we share too soon, since it's resulted in almost all new comments being, WHERE IS THE LIGHTSABER?! I mean, come on guys, y it might not be brain surgery, but building a lightsaber is basically rocket science. It's taken us quite a few months to get just right, and we also had to upgrade our equipment in the shop to even be able to manufacture it. Like our new- When you get literal rocket scientists to, instead of doing something, I don't know, useful, <laughs> They make a goddamn lightsaber instead. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, it's a freaking lightsaber. But to that end, ima like imagine how many innovations we've had based on designs from like sci-fi movies. New Tormach 1100MX CNC machine, complete with a fourth axis. Bogdan's been pretty excited to try it out. I have and no idea what he just Star said. Star Wars was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's only fitting that our first real plasma lightsaber is steampunk. I think it's Bogdan's turn to design that hill. Steampunk is a subset of science fiction, which incorporates antique design aesthetics from the 19th century with modern technologies. When I was scrolling through to get some design inspirations for the lightsaber, I came across this picture and it instantly caught my attention. I think steampunk would be great for this design because we're going to be using a lot of gauges, valves, copper tubing, and regulators, which are going to look perfect in this installation. Here's the final design of our lightsaber hilt. It incorporates lots of materials, including brass, copper, stainless, glass, and even leather to give it that true steampunk look. I've even decided to add the kyber crystal heating chamber using some EL wire in a neon bulb to make it look really cool in the dark. 
The copper plates that carry our flammable gases are nice and visible, and the adjustment knobs are easily accessible. Thanks to our new Tormach machines, we are now able to manufacture much more intricate designs, such as this one. Let's make it real. This so if you touch those pipes, you pretty much just get like a third degree burn instantly. Got it. Wow, dude. The amount of manpower required to build this, how much do you think a lightsaber like this, how much do you think we would have to pay for it? I would say no less. No less than like in the in the tens of thousands. No less than like a $10,000 lightsaber. This is a full blown like This is like a full blown company. What do they do in their what do they do in their off time? Like they can't just be making YouTube videos in their off time, right? They have all this equipment. I feel like they gotta be doing something else too. But what is their regular job if they have one? This is proof that when nerds really want to get something done, they do it. And also more proof that you should become friends with nerds, okay? At all times, you should have no less than three nerd friends around you. At any given time. My God. Oh my God, that looks incredible. Hey, whoa, put some gloves on. I'm oh, sorry. Can't get any smudges on a lightsaber. Yeah, don't smudge it. This is the world's first lightsaber, dude. That is incredible. I think you've outdone yourself on this one, Bogdan. Look at the detail on that. If that's not steampunk, I don't know what is. Can we get a close-up? But the real question is, how are we gonna power this? Even with all of our new equipment and capabilities here at Hacksmith Industries, we're still kind of bound by the laws of thermodynamics. Which means we're still going to have to make this into a proto-saber with a power pack separate from the hilt. 
Now we've made incredibly energy dense power packs before, but in order to get enough power for a plasma based lightsaber, we're going to have to use something with more energy dense fuel. In this case, LPG, compressed liquid propane gas, which can give us 50 times more energy per kilogram than a LiPo. Now that's a pretty incredible difference. Is and the it? The cool thing, you probably have this right at home. We're talking about normal propane that you use in your barbecue. So how do we turn propane into a superheated beam of plasma? The answer lies with one of the most satisfying demonstrations of physics phenomena of fluids, laminar flow. Basically, we need a large array of laminar flow nozzles to create highly concentrated flow of gas to create a plasma beam. Lucky for us, we is... are the only ones who need this. And highly Wait, when, when you make, what, what's it called? Laminar flows? Can't you, just make a, can't you just make that flow with anything? You need something specific for that? Interesting. But also, when they, when they show me things like the numbers on the screen, like, I, I get that they're trying to, like, educate, you know? But I have absolutely zero clue what's going on. It's bound to look cool, though, right? Like, you know? All right. Specialized gas nozzles like this can be found at a rather high price. This nozzle right here costs over $4,000 and it's used in the glass blowing industry. To achieve maximum temperature, we need complete combustion, which means in addition to this propane, we're actually gonna be using oxygen as well. That doesn't sound dangerous, right? Anyways, let's see how it works. First, turn on the propane. The danger that then they put themselves the in Some for our glasses. entertainment. I hope we can really appreciate this. And the sparker. So look at that. <laughs> is that not a lightsaber? This beam is really cool. It's actually burning at around 4,000 Fahrenheit, which means it's capable of cutting through a lot of stuff. Should we cut through some stuff? Holy shit. Whoa. So this is actually our old lightsaber blade made of titanium. And look at that. It's already white hot. And melting? That is so bright, Jesus. The really cool thing about doing a flame like this is we can actually color it using salts. Let's start with some boric acid. What color do you think it's going to turn the blade? Got your guesses? Ooh, look at that. Dude, that's Next sick. Up, we have calcium chloride. Woo. Damn, is this the closest that we get to uh, actual lightsaber? There's gotta be like upcoming technologies that allow us to do even crazier things than this, right? Because, or have we stopped innovating in this field? I can imagine that that's the questions that people ask. Oh, will it stop a laser or a blaster? Will it resist another saber? If it's not that, then screw you, man. It's not a real lightsaber. Look at that red orange. That almost hurts to look at. We have some strontium chloride. Woo! That is like a road flare. This actually hurts to look at. Look at that. This actually hurts to look at while looking like directly in it. Yeah, wow. This really burns my eyeballs. Oh my God. Yeah, isn't that cool? Also known as salt. Woo, and look at that. We've got Ray's lightsaber right here. Is that not cool? So we're able to produce a blue lightsaber, a green lightsaber, a red lightsaber, an amber lightsaber, and even a yellow lightsaber. How awesome is that? I should probably turn this off though. That took a lot of fine tuning to get the blade to the right length. And turning it off wasn't the most elegant. Luckily, Bogdan's gonna be actually making a circuit with two fancy valves, which means we'll actually be able to get a computer to control the flow of gas to allow for this to ignite and retract with the press of a button. So, I'm gonna let Bogdan handle that. After 12 weeks of anticipation, we finally got our hands on proportional control valves. These will allow us to control exactly how much gas goes into the lightsaber and therefore make it extend and retract. 
Now, we just need to figure out how to control it. And to do that, I'll be making a custom printed circuit board. I'm gonna be using Altium Designer, as it's the industry standard for PCB design software, and it's super powerful. This is the printed circuit board that Charles designed to use for the crisis arm. But since both projects are using pneumatic valves and auxiliary outputs, they made crisis things. These guys are, I mean, okay. This is the first video I've ever seen of the Hacksmith. And it got me because it, it, had, it had lightsaber in the title. But now I definitely got to subscribe and wait for more. To better understand how the lightsaber electronics work, check out our page on maker.io. And build they just, they're just they just giving out this information pieces. to everybody. That. That's so cool. Well, this all needs to be polished before I can start building. I'm going to let Dave handle that. No. Fine. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Okay. This just makes me want to learn how to do some of this. At least some like basic woodworking, you know? Is this a great reveal right here? Honestly, I would probably be way too scared to like even hold something that dangerous. We did it, the world's first retractable plasma-based lightsaber. Now obviously we're gonna have an amazing test video for this. We've got tons of stuff set up behind us to really put this through its paces, including cutting through a steel door. Anyways, that video is actually available right now for our Patreon supporters and YouTube members, which is a great time to support the channel and get to see this video early. For everyone else, it'll be out next week. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe. Wow. <laughs> Wait, are we getting Oh, I thought that they were just stopping the video there. Oh, they are. Oh my God. I have to actually, okay. I have to just wait till tomorrow. Damn you. I'm definitely watching this. A hundred percent. Dude, that's crazy. I want to see the test.